December, the month of magic. The first snowfall was snowflakes floating down like kisses from heaven. Fresh blanket of snow inviting our feet to play and our soul to laugh. The tinge of rosy cheeks, invisible breath suddenly seen floating through the air. The still quiet air as nature rests. A time for cozy thoughts, warm woolen mittens, and memories. A time that brings out the child in us. A time for peaceful spirit, a full heart, and a soul bursting with joy. Yes, this is December. Hello, December. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Happy December. Autumn is officially over. We've reached the holiday season. And I wanted to share with you six ways that I like to enjoy this time of year and give my Christmas spirit a little boost. Hope this gives you some inspiration and you enjoy. So the first thing I think about is ambiance, setting the tone or the mood of your home. Lighting is very important in this. I like to have on, you know, instead of my overhead lighting, putting on some nice lamps, lighting candles. If you have a wood stove or a fireplace, lighting a fire, of course, Christmas lights. Christmas lights on your tree or Christmas lights around your window or wherever you wanna put them, uh, twinkly lights and whatnot. And of course, that kind of goes along with decorating, putting up the Christmas tree. Um, I really enjoy making a lot of homemade decorations, which I'll actually be touching on in a future video. You can go as extravagant or as simple as you want. You can, you know, go grab some pine branches or whatever out in your yard and tie some red ribbon around it. Uh, some red felt and embroider little ornaments, or you can, you know, totally go all out. Pull out a Christmas mug, even just books that are red or, you know, kind of fit the theme. I'll do that sometimes, or wreaths, or, you know, really whatever. And then while I'm decorating and setting the lighting and lighting a fire and candles, I like to have something playing um, in the background. I either put on some classic music, uh, Christmas music, or I like to put on a classic Christmas film, you know, something that you don't really have to sit down and pay attention to the plot because you already know it and you've watched it a hundred times. Um, and I just like to have that playing in the background and it makes decorating a lot more fun. So this next one kind of goes along with the ambiance, but I wanted to give it its own category. And that is aromas or scents or smells. I think this is somewhat of an obvious one for some people. Obviously scented candles are very popular. I like to find other natural ways to make the home smell really nice. One way that I do that is a potpourri on the stove. So for this one, I put in some orange slices, cinnamon sticks, a few cranberries, okay, a lot of cranberries, <laughs> um, some little pine branches from my yard, and some, I am drawing a blank, uh, clove. And you just let that simmer with some water on a stove. Bring the water to a boil first, then add the ingredients. Do be careful because if you leave it unattended, which you should never do, um, the water will boil down and it will become a fire hazard. So keep an eye on it, add more water as needed, and you can just let that simmer all day and it fills your house with a really nice warm smell. Now you can also take those ingredients, or at least a few of them, like the cinnamon sticks or orange slices, and throw them into the fire and that also creates a nice smell through the home. Now of course another great way to fill your home with wonderful smells and create a delicious treat is to bake. Bake cookies, bake bread, bake cakes, bake really whatever. Um, and that's a nice natural way to fill your home with a warm smell and then have something delicious to eat afterwards. And of course, during Christmas time, we set up trees. So if you're someone who sets up a real Christmas tree, that will, of course, fill your home with a beautiful smell. Um, but if you're someone who cannot or just doesn't uh, set up a real Christmas tree, you can always get pine or fir tree essential oils and sprinkle that over your tree and it gives a very um, nice smell. And it's actually fairly realistic. I've fooled a few people with this. One of my favorite quotes from Anna Green Gables, it is ever so much easier to be good if your clothes are fashionable. So next up on my list I have outfits and with this you can be as extravagant or minimal as you'd like. Um, I personally have one special Christmas sweater that I wear on Christmas and only Christmas every year. 
Um, and that's become sort of a tradition and really fun and special for me. But I've also collected quite a few other things over the years. I have a really nice red puffer jacket, a red cloak, some pretty dresses, and a few other sweaters that I just really enjoy wearing this time of year. But you can also accent, you know, with just a pretty red hair bow, or a really nice winter hat, or a cute pair of mittens, a scarf, you know, again, it can be the little things, it can be a full outfit. Um, the important thing is just to have fun. So quite a few years ago now, I started making seasonal bucket lists. Um, and that's really been such a fun thing for me. It's really helped me enjoy, truly enjoy every season. Some seasons you don't really need too much help to enjoy. I think Christmas is one of them. But you know, depending on where you live, if you have really long, dark winters, sometimes those times of year and those seasons may not seem as wonderful or as fun or as great. And you might just be waiting for it to be over with already. But I found that when I sat down and I made a bucket list or you know things that I could look forward to doing during that season or, or activities I could enjoy it really helped me just enjoy the whole year round you know no matter what season I was in so first it was just a scrap of paper that I wrote some stuff on and I stuck it on the fridge but then I started to decorate them and embellish and kind of make it look pretty um, as a way of decorating so if you're interested in the Christmas bucket list you see here it's on my website you can print it out color it in and do everything I'm doing now so I just printed this out I don't have a color printer but that's fine it's fun to color it in so I colored it in with some pencils I'm now gonna stain it with some coffee. So this is a trick that I learned randomly when I was probably eight or nine years old and I've honestly been using it for everything ever since. And, and then every year I find more and more ways to use it. You'll see here, we're gonna stain it in coffee. You can also use black tea for this, but just get a basin, put some black tea or coffee in it, and then you just let the paper soak. The longer you let it soak, the darker the stain, but what this is going to do is it's going to stain it and give it a really nice sort of, you know, weathered or old paper look. But it will also, I don't really know how to describe it, but it blends the colors very nicely and makes it look more like artwork than just something I printed out and colored in a few minutes with some pencils. So it turns out really nice. And again, the longer you let it set, the darker the stain will be. So you can honestly let it set for just half an hour to an hour. Um, you can let it set overnight, two days, you know, sometimes I forget about them uh, when I'm doing certain projects and I've let it sit there for a couple of days, but it will smell really pretty like coffee. And if you don't like the smell of coffee, use black tea or something else. It dries pretty quickly, to be honest. So this was pretty much completely dry in like 40 minutes to an hour. And then just sit down and write out what you are looking forward to doing this season and uh, yeah, make it your own. So my next suggestion is to find a cozy project. Learn something new, find something you can work on or create that you can cozy up with, you know, a cup of cocoa in the evenings with a fire blazing or a Christmas movie playing in the background. My project this year that I decided to try was to knit a blanket by hand. This is definitely not a tutorial, by the way. I did not pick the best yarn. I ordered this online and it was shiny and pretty and soft and a beautiful color. However, my naive self soon discovered what a terrible mistake I had made. The yarn completely came apart. I was pulling the knot tight and it just ripped. And that's when I realized this yarn is not very strong. And that's also when I started to realize that it was shedding like crazy. It was already all over my sweater. It was getting all over the rug. And instead of being an intelligent human being and returning the yarn, getting better yarn and starting over, I, for some reason, kept going. <laughs> Now, I will say I did get a blanket in the end, but if you try this, make sure you get better yarn because this yarn really gave me a lot of trouble. So the idea is that you start with that first knot, you just keep making a bunch of loops, you create sort of a braid, and then you make an extra loop to start a new row, and you do more loops from there, and it just, it's kind of like braiding, but simple. You're just looping loops through loops, if that makes any sense at all. 
So when I first started, the loops were not looking great, and then I started to get kind of the hang of it, and they started to be a little tighter knit and more even looking, but you'll notice here a very large gap or hole. Um, that is one of the loops that I lost. I, I lost a loop. I, a loop was left behind, and because of that, I now have a hole in the blanket that I cannot fix unless I undo like the whole thing and go back. So because I was having this problem, I tried grabbing a cue stick from like a pool table and was like oh i'll feed it through the loops and that way no matter how much i'm tugging and pulling none of the loops will get left behind but that ended up being way too cumbersome so i sort of abandoned that pretty quickly again i just kind of made do overall i lived and learned and will definitely try this again and it was still fun and I just played some relaxing Christmas music. Then I'd kind of put on a show, something like Murder, Shiro. I know that's not Christmas, but I just like that show. <laughs> and here's what I ended up with. And here's another shot of the finished but not finished product because I forgot to take a full shot of my finished blanket all laid out. So lastly, we have Christmas cards. This is something that I wasn't really into until... I don't know, maybe the last few years, but I've really found enjoyment in writing Christmas cards and letters to my friends and family during this time of year and finding ways to make it special for them um, and also finding ways to make it a nice special time for me. You know, making a nice environment like decorating my writing desk or having nice music playing in the background or sitting by the fire. You know, really taking my time with it, making it a relaxing time versus, oh, this is a chore. I have to get my Christmas cards out or, oh gosh, I got to make sure I send a card to everybody. I send cards or letters to people that I want to send them to, not out of obligation. Again, I just try to make it a fun time or something I can look forward to and really not rush through it. So here I just went online and I looked for cute Christmas images or old Christmas cards. Be careful if you type in Victorian Christmas cards, by the way you'll come up with some very interesting uh, results. But anyway, I found this cute one of a bird's and I found this other one which is just sort of a border for maybe writing a little note to someone. And just like the bucket list, I'm just gonna color it in with some pencils and then later on I'm gonna stain them. So once I have them all colored in, I again get my basin of coffee and I just let them soak for however long. I think I let these guys soak about an hour. And again, it just really gives it a nice aged look and it blends the colors and makes it look a lot nicer than just something I quickly colored. And here you'll just see a comparison between one that I colored and stained with the coffee and one that I colored and haven't stained yet. So I like to find different ways to embellish or make them special for the people I'm giving them to. Ribbon or Christmas picks, ink and stamps, or even just again coloring them or writing a special little message or you know whatever the case may be. Again you can go all out or little touches. So one thing I like to do is if I have plain envelopes I like to add borders. Um, draw little designs, maybe put a little Merry Christmas stamp on there. If it's a card I'll be giving a person and not mailing, I like to maybe wrap it like a package with some ribbon and put a little Christmas pick on top. I had some Christmas cards that came with just these plain white envelopes, so again, I just drew a really pretty border with some red berries or lights or however you want to interpret that. But in the end, I think the best way to make a Christmas card special to a loved one is to take the time to sit down and really write out an honest and heartfelt message to them. You know, take the time to really think about what you want to say to them. And I've come to really enjoy the time because as I'm sitting there writing that card for them, you know, I'm thinking about them and it's sort of, uh, not meditative, but it's a time that I truly think about that loved one and focus on them. Maybe the things that I love about them or the ways they bring joy to my life or ways that I've been praying or thinking about them lately. When I get done with the letter and I sign my name and I seal it, I have a smile on my face and I feel good inside. Well, that's all I have for you guys for now. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some inspiration and ideas. Hope you all have a wonderful December and you're ready to take on the new year. This is Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. See you soon in my next video. Until then, keep smiling.